السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكریم رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقه قولی اللہم اہدی قلبی وسدد لسانی وصل السخیمت قلبی آمین یا رب العالمین انشاءاللہ we will continue with our study of the names of Allah the exalted the names of Allah which are the most beautiful, the most excellent, Al-Husna. And inshallah, today we will begin with the name of Allah, As-Subuh. Now the name of Allah, As-Subuh, is a name that a lot of people are not familiar with. But it is actually a name of Allah which the Prophet wasallam used to mention very frequently in his salah. Meaning when the Prophet ﷺ was in Rukur and in Sujood, he would often say, Subuhun Quddusun Rabbul Malaikati wa Ruh. He would glorify and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by using this name, as Subuh. So we see that the name of Allah as Subuh, yes, it does not occur in the Quran, but definitely it occurs in the Sunnah. Because the Prophet ﷺ used to glorify Allah by by saying this name, As-Subuh. Now, when we look at the name As-Subuh, what does it mean? We see that the name As-Subuh basically means the one whose tasbih is done, uh, or the one who, uh, the one for whom a lot of tasbih is done, meaning the one who deserves a lot of tasbih. And what exactly is the meaning of tasbih? Tasbih, generally, we understand this as glorification meaning to exalt or to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we look at the basic meaning of the word sabbaha, uh, basically sabaha is, is to swim or to move very quickly in air or in water. And when something moves so quickly, then what does that mean? It is being distanced. So the point of tasbih is to distance or to remove from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything that is unbefitting anything that is that that is not uh, befitting of him so for example it is to declare that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one without any equal without any partner when you say subhanallah what you're saying is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect he is free and far removed from any imperfection, any similarity, any equal, any child, anyone that resembles him, any weakness or any deficiency, so uh, or, or any resemblance to the creation. So this is the the prime the the basic meaning of Subhanallah. So Subuh is the one for whom a lot of tasbih is done, meaning the one who is free from any deficiency, the one who is free from any fault, the one who is uh, free from any resemblance to anybody. So he has no, no partner, no equal, no one who shares anything with him. And it means that he is free from anything that does not befit him. So Subuh is a name of perfection, a name of glorification. And uh, we see that even though the name is not mentioned in the Quran, there are many places where we have been instructed to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or we have been informed that everything in the heavens and the earth glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, ayah number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ That whatever that is in the skies and whatever that is in the earth is glorifying Allah. It is declaring the perfection of Allah. And this is because truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect when we think about the creation no matter how able or how beautiful or how powerful a creature may be it is still deficient it is still weak this is the reality of the creation it is only the creator who is free from any fault uh, 
So yusabbihu lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. Then we see in Surah Al-Isra, ayah number 44, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tusabbihu lahu al samawati wa sab'u wal ardu wa man fihin. That the seven heavens, the seven skies, and the earth, and whoever that is within them is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is declaring the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning it is not just you know people or birds or ants or angels, it is the skies themselves, it is the earth itself that is glorifying and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in Jannah, we learn in Surah Yunus, ayah number 10, that da'wahum fiha subhanakallahumma. That the people in Jannah, their saying will be subhanakallahumma, that, oh Allah, you are perfect. So in this world and in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truly deserving of all praise because he is perfect in his in all of his qualities he is free from any deficiency from any weakness any fault any resemblance and he is perfectly glorious and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is subuh and we see that when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned the name subuh he mentioned it with quddus subuhun quddusun and Quddus also gives a similar meaning, the one who is all holy, and then Rabbul Malaikati wa Ruh. Now, when we uh, see the name as Subuh, yes, definitely the Prophet ﷺ used this name when calling upon Allah. But what are some other ways in which we can glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Definitely in Rukur, in Sajda, we should add this in our salah that we say Subuhun Quddusun Rabbul Malaikati wa Ruh. And then otherwise also, we should increase in our tasbih, in our glorification of Allah. And there's so many ways of glorifying Allah. You know, you can simply say subhanallah. You can say subhanallah wa bihamdi. You can say subhanallah al-azim wa bihamdi. You can say subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. You can say subhanallah wa bihamdihi, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimatihi. You know, there's so many ways of glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is, why should we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much? The thing is that when we glorify Allah, we are stating the greatest truth. We are stating, we, we are uh, saying a statement of absolute truth. Because definitely, most certainly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. And when we say this statement, this only benefits us. We learned earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hamid, meaning he's always worthy of praise. He doesn't need our praise. He is worthy of praise even without us praising him. So his perfection, his glory doesn't increase or decrease by our praise of him. The fact is that when we praise and glorify Allah, we are the ones who benefit. How? Because when we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, this is something that brings us reward, right? This is something that brings us benefit. So we see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he told people once that khudu junnatakum, that take your junnah. Junnah is your shield, your protective gear. So he said, uh, take, take your protective gear. And the people said that has an enemy appeared? Is there an enemy that is coming that we should take on our uh, you know, arms and weapons to defend ourselves, to protect ourselves? He said, no. He said, وَلَكِنْ جُنَّتَكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ Take your junnah against the fire of hell. Meaning protect yourselves from the fire of hell. And how should you do that? He said, say, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Say these words because they will come on the day of judgment as, as shields, meaning as, uh, uh, as something that will protect you and defend you 
from the fire of hell. And he said that there are also baqiyatu saliha. There are also good deeds that will remain. That will, uh, you know, uh, th th these are al baqiyatu saliha, good deeds that will endure. Uh, because the good things of the world, they don't last. But these words that you say, these are good deeds that will remain, that will last forever. Meaning you will see them, you will find them on the day of judgment also. Because you see the things of the, of the world, the good things of the world, no matter how much value we assign to them, they're not meant to stay with us forever. They're not going to show up on the day of judgment. They're going to finish with the world. So what is it that we will have with us on that day? It is the good deeds that we perform. And among them, the most easiest of them is, of course, the remembrance of Allah. And at the top is, subhanallah, the, the mention of the, the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a subuh. Then we, say this, then we see that another benefit of tasbih is that when we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is something that helps us deal with our fear, our sadness, our anxiety, our disappointment, or whatever uh, you know feelings that we have in our hearts that are troubling us. And the fact is that every now and then something happens in our lives which you know brings us inner pain, which which uh, which creates a certain um, uh, you know uh, feeling of uh, sometimes despair or uh, even unease or you know a sadness, uh, disconnect from people, uh, and 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 these are things that really uh, weigh heavily upon us. Sometimes it is simply because we heard someone saying something nasty about us. And because of that, you know, our, our entire day is ruined. Sometimes we remember these hurtful words for days and days, for months and years. And every time that we recall that rejection letter or we recall that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, word of uh, that, that very hurtful word, it, it, it drowns us in our grief. So how can we deal with such things? We see that tasbih is a, is a way of strengthening the heart. When you remember how perfect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, then this is something that strengthens you from the inside. Why? Because when you look at yourself, when you recognize yourself, you, you know how weak and incapable you are. You recognize how limited you are in your abilities. You recognize how uh, how strong perhaps your enemies are. You, you realize how many challenges you have in your life. But then when you when you realize that you're not alone, when you realize that you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, who, who protects you, who provides for you, who, uh, who has everything in his control, and you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is most perfect, then this is something that strengthens you from, from the inside. This is something that brings you hope even when you're feeling extremely down. So we see that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is addressed in the Quran in Surah Al-Hijr ayah 97 to 99 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says walaqad na'lamu annaka yadiqu sadruka bima yaqulun that certainly we know that your heart your chest feels constricted because of the things that people say and the kind of things that people said about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's unbelievable how, uh, what wrong statements they said about him behind his back and to his face. Subhanallah. And not just one person, but so many people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reassures him that we know what, what kind of things people say about you. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the solution. What is the solution? That فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ Glorify with the praise of your Lord, meaning glorify your Lord and praise Him. Say Subhanallah. Say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Glorify your Lord wa kumina sajideen and be among those who make sajda to Allah, meaning worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, perform the salah. Wa'bud Rabbaka hatta yatiyak al yaqin and worship your Lord until certainty comes to you. And one of the meanings of certainty over here is death, meaning worship your Lord until the end of your life. So we see over here that 
Uh, the Prophet ﷺ was instructed to do tasbih in order to strengthen his heart. And this is something that we all should benefit from. Any time that we are feeling down, that we are feeling weak, that we are feeling discouraged and lost, and we don't know what to do, or we're feeling very hurt, and sometimes out of nowhere, you know, these feelings of anxiety, they just pop in. Yes, definitely we have to, uh, you know, take other measures as well, but making tasbih, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be a part of our healing plan. In fact, it should be a habit, not just something that we do when we're struggling, but also something that we do when times are good, when, when we're feeling good. This is something that we should make a habit of to glorify and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we see that making tasbih, when you glorify Allah, this is something that doesn't just strengthen you uh, in, in terms of your, uh, you know, your, uh, your uh, emotional issues, but also your spiritual issues. So for example, the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever is such that he is frightened by the night, meaning the darkness of the night scares him. And then, or he is stingy uh, to spend wealth uh, meaning a person is stingy on the inside they, they they they're too selfish too greedy to give of what they have they find it very difficult to share they find it very difficult to spend or is too weak to face an enemy so three things the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned over here whoever is scared by the darkness of the night too stingy to spend his wealth, or too afraid to face his enemy. Then such a person, he said, فَلْيُكْثِرْ مِنْ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِ Then he should increase in saying, سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِ So when you glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will strengthen you emotionally and also spiritually. Because in order to spend of your wealth, yes, uh, you know, you need that emotional stability, but you also need that spiritual strength that that uh, uh, you know dependency on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that realization that when I give in the way of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not uh, you know leave me empty-handed so tasbih is your spiritual strength it is your emotional strength and then we see that especially when it comes to sadness when it comes to grief and this could be because of different reasons it could be because of your own past mistakes regret can cause a person to be sad. It can be because of some kind of loss. Uh, it can be because of some disappointment. Any reason because of which a person is feeling sad. Again, tasbih is extremely helpful in such situations. We see in the Quran the example of Yunus alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah 87 and 88, that وَذَا النُّونِ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا فَظَنَّ أَلَّنَّ نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ That uh, noon and the noon, meaning Yunus alayhi salam, when he left, while he was extremely angry with his people, and he didn't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would decree anything against him, meaning he didn't think he was doing anything wrong, but then later on, when he was caught in the belly of the fish, fanada fil ghulumat, he called out from the darknesses, Allah ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al that there is no God worthy of worship except you, O Allah. Subhanak, you are perfect. All glory is for you. Inni kuntu min al Indeed, I am of those who do wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ So we responded to him and we rescued him from sadness. We rescued him from grieving. وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And that is how we rescue the believers. Meaning any believer after Yunus alayhi salam, if they glorify Allah in their grief, in their sadness, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rescue them. So we see that sometimes, uh, you know, we can identify a reason as to why we are sad. And there are other times when, you know, we, we look at our lives and other people may even tell us that, why are you sad? You know, you're being too dramatic. But you see, this is a feeling that is real. It cannot be denied. But it is also a feeling that can really consume us, that can really uh, affect every aspect of our lives. 
So whether other people acknowledge it or, or don't, you know if you're grieving or you're not. You know how heavy that, that feeling of sadness, of despair, or, or even uh, uh, you know, the grief is. So how do you lighten that burden? And, and how, do you, uh, how do you allow yourself to be rescued from it? By calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al You see, sometimes there could be, uh, you know, uh, an, an exam that, that you have to write or a very, a very difficult part of your life that you're going through, a very difficult news that you've just been given, you know, uh, with regards to your health or your family, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. But, you know, these are realities of life. And sometimes more than anything, what bothers us is, why am I so sad, right? And so uh, it, how, how do you deal with this? By calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you have to do other things as well, but this should be a part of your plan to help yourself, that you glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al And then we see that when a person does tasbih, they glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more, then because of that, their du'as are also uh, responded to. Uh, we see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, uh, the, the, that the du'a of Yunus alayhi salam La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Any Muslim, when, when he calls upon his Lord with this dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will certainly respond to him. And this is why we see that tasbih in general also, when you glorify Allah, this is a step towards having your duas accepted. So for example, in your rukur, when you say subuhun, when you say subhana rabbi al-azim, subhana rabbi al-azim, subhana rabbi al-azim, then you say subuhun quddusun rabbul malaikati wal ruh, and then you make some dua. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something. And yes, you can do the same thing in sajda as well, subhana rabbi al-a'la, subhana rabbi al-a'la, you glorify Allah, and then you Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, whether it is forgiveness or it is some, uh, you know, some certain, uh, you know, uh, a blessing that, that you want, uh, any form of provision that you want. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, by glorifying him azza wa jalla first. So this was the name of Allah, as-subuh. Now, inshallah, we will look at the names al-qadir, al-qadir, and al-muqtadir. Al-Qadir, Al-Qadir, and Al-Muqtadir. Now these names of Allah, uh, first of all, we see that the name Al-Qadir occurs 12 times in the Qur'an. The name Al-Qadir occurs 45 times and Muqtadir occurs 4 times in the Qur'an. And we see that these names uh, are similar in meaning in the sense that all three mean one who has ability. Uh, but we see that Qadir uh, is, is a more emphatic form of Qadir and Muqtadir is an even more emphatic form of Qadir. So not just one who is able, but one who is ever able, one who is perfectly able. Now, when we look at these names, these names basically give two connotations. And what are they? The first connotation is Qadir is one who has Qudra. Okay, one who has Qudra. And what does qudra mean? It means ability or strength or power. And it also, the second connotation is one who does taqdeer, meaning one who uh, determines, the one who measures, the one who decrees, the one who ordains. So these are the two connotations of the names, uh, uh, qadir, qadir, and muqtadir. Now, let's look at these two connotations. The first connotation, as I mentioned, is one who has qudra. And qudra, as I mentioned earlier, is quwa. It is strength, it is power, it is ability. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qadir, meaning his ability, he has perfect ability, perfect strength, which means that he is able to do whatsoever that he wants. It means that nothing at all is unattainable for him. It means that he is capable of all things. So if he intends something, if he wants something, 
It will definitely happen. Why? Because he, he is perfect in his ability. What happens with the creation is that they may want something to happen. They may even try to make something happen, but they fail to fulfill their, their goals or, or, to, or to achieve their goals right to uh, to uh, realize their dreams why because of our weakness this is our reality we are not perfect in our ability whereas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the creator because he is such that la ilaha illahu his ability is perfect so we see that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran in surah al-an'am ayah 65 قُلْ هُوَ الْقَادِرُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ أَوْ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلِكُمْ أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيَعًا وَيُذِيقَ بَعْضَكُمْ بَأْسَ بَعْضٍ انظر كيف نصرف الآيات لعلهم يفقهون In Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 65, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say that he is Al-Qadir. He is perfectly able to do what? عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ To send a punishment on you from above you. أَوْ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلِكُمْ Or he can send a punishment to you from beneath your feet. أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيَعًا Or he is able to, he is perfectly able to divide you into groups, meaning into factions. And then what will happen? There's confusion, there's chaos, and then there's animosity as a result of which And he can cause you to taste the, the might of each other. Meaning he can cause you to become divided so that you all are busy just fighting one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of doing that. Sending something from above you or from beneath your feet or from within you. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfect ability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرٍ That indeed Allah to return him to life, meaning human beings, is able. Meaning when a person has died, the body has disintegrated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to bring life to that body again. He is able to return him to life. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability. And then the second connotation that Allah subhanahu that uh, uh, that He is the one who who does taqdeer, so one who has qudra, meaning perfect ability, and secondly, one who does taqdeer. And taqdeer is to uh, give measure, to determine, and to decree and ordain. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa taala He is the one who decides what He wants to do with the creation, and whatever that He decides. Whatever that he decrees certainly happens. It certainly occurs. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills happens. Whatever he does not will cannot ever happen. So this is taqdeer. And remember that taqdeer is related to knowledge and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, expertise, right? Knowledge meaning uh, in order to determine something so for example when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything we know that he has created everything according to a certain measure it is not random so for example uh, just the human body even uh, any to uh, uh, for for a human body to function there's so many systems within the human body that need to be regulated right each hormone or each uh, uh, you know uh, uh, thing is in the body, whether it is blood pressure or it is temperature, any the, the most basic things, even that we are aware of, they need to be within a certain uh, measure. And we see that if anything is below that measure or beyond that measure, that is what causes sickness or even death. Subhanallah. So, uh, so in order to uh, do taqdeer. Uh, knowledge is a requirement and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his knowledge is perfect and he hasn't just decreed regarding human beings but every single creature that we know of and also so much more that we have no idea about so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who does taqdeer so which and this means that what whatever he decides 
happens, and for every creature, he has determined a precise decree. So in Surah Al-Mursalat, Ayah 23, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقَدَرْنَا فَنِعْمَ الْقَادِرُونَ So we decreed, and what, and what an excellent way it is in which we have decreed. So, uh, so this is the, the basic meaning of Qadir. Now, when we look at the name Qadir, I mentioned to you earlier that uh, it's similar in meaning, but it is a more emphatic form. So Qadir doesn't just mean one who is able, but it means one who is ever able, one who is always all able, meaning his qudra, his ability is such that it is a shamila, meaning it, it is perfect and it is over everything. It is, it is total, it is over everything. And that, uh, and that his qudra, his ability is such that it is permanent. It is sifa qa'ima. You see, our problem with the, you know, with the creation, uh, you know, as creation, what happens with us is that our abilities are limited, not just in how much they are, but also in terms of time. You know, there's only a certain uh, period of our lives in which we have certain strengths. We see that in childhood, we don't have certain abilities. And then again, in old age, we begin to lose those abilities. Or in certain places, we have certain abilities. But in other places, we don't have those abilities. So our abilities, uh, they are limited in terms of time, in terms of place. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his, uh, his qudra is such that it is sifa qa'ima. So he is always able. He is always free from any uh, weakness. So no weakness of any level reaches him at any point. Sheikh Saadi said that Al-Qadir is the one who is perfect in his ability. And it is with his ability that he brought the things that exist into existence. It is with his perfect ability that he determined and regulated their affairs. It is with his ability that he fashioned all creatures and also strengthened them. It is with his ability that he gives life and he gives death. And he will raise, meaning he will resurrect the slaves for recompense. So he will reward the doers of good for their good and he will punish those of evil for their evil. So when he intends something, he only says be and it occurs. So it is with his qudra that he will resurrect the dead. It is with his perfect qudra that he will recompense people. And it is with his perfect qudra that he just says kun and things happen. And it is with his ability that he changes the hearts of people. Allahu Akbar. This is his ability that he is even able to change the hearts of people. We are not able to do that. We can try to convince people for hours. We can cry before them. We can yell at them. We can threaten them. We can show love to them. We can show compassion to them. We can try different ways, but we don't have control over the hearts of people. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has control over the hearts of people. So he can change the hearts of people and he can turn them in whatever direction that he wants. So this is Al-Qadir. Now, when we look at the name of Allah Al-Qadir in the Quran, we see, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his name Al-Qadir when it comes to the creation of people, especially the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created people in stages and that he causes them to change constantly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rum, Ayah 54, that Allahu alladhi khalaqakum min da'fin that Allah is the one who created you from weakness. Then he made after weakness strength. So really, at the time when a child is born, it's extremely weak. But then what happens? With time, the child, you know, develops the strength to, uh, uh, you know, uh, hold his neck and then sit up and then stand up, right? And then walk and then eat, etc., etc. So, ثُمَّ جَعْلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ضَعْفٍ قُوَّةً So who gave that quwa? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ جَعْلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ ضَعْفًا And then he made after strength weakness again. 
Why? Because now, uh, as you know, as as a human being grow ages, right? They, uh, he also declines in his strength. Washaybatan and old age. Yahlukumayasha, he creates whatever that he wants. Wahuwal Alim al Qadir. And he is Al Alim, the one who is knowledgeable, and he is Al Qadir, the one who is perfect in his ability. And then we see that the name Al Qadir is also mentioned uh, with regards to the variation in creation. So he is perfectly able, which is why he is able to not just create, but also change people. And then uh, he is also able to create so many different types of creatures. In Surah An-Nur, Ayah 45, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu khalaqa kulla dabbatim mimma. That Allah has created, Allah, that Allah has created every moving creature from water. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى بَطْنِي So among them is the creature that walks on its stomach, meaning that, that moves on its stomach, it crawls. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى رِجْلَيْنِ And among them is the creature that is able to walk on two feet. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى أربع. And among them is a creature that is able to walk on four feet, four legs. يَخْلُقُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah creates whatever that He wants. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Indeed, Allah is able to do all things. Or He is powerful over all things. He has qudra, He has perfect ability over everything. So He's able to create uh, creatures that crawl. He's able to create creatures that walk on two feet. And he's also able to create creatures that walk on four feet. This is the qudra of Allah. And then we see that this name is also mentioned when a resurrection is mentioned in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 148, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wheresoever you may be, Allah will bring all of you back together. Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Indeed, Allah is able over everything. When it comes to the abilities that we have, again, the name of Allah Al-Qadir is mentioned over there. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 20, Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَذَهَبَ بِسَمْعِهِمْ وَأَبُصَارِهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ That if Allah wanted, He could have taken away their hearing and their vision. Indeed, Allah is able to do all things. Allahu Akbar. And if any of our abilities function, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled them to function. And if he wants, he can disable them. Yani, all ability is with Allah. He, he created certain strengths in us. And if he wants, he can take them away. When it comes to revelation, when it comes to specifically abrogation, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a command and then after some time he canceled it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِهَا نَأْتِ بِخَيْرٍ مِنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا أَلَمْ تَعَلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ That when abrogation is mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us, do you not know that Allah is able to do all things? Yani it's up to him. If he wants, he can give a command. If he wants, he can cancel it. He can replace it with another. It's completely his choice. He has the ability to do that, the authority to do that. And then we see that when it comes to Assisting the creatures, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ That indeed Allah is able to help them. He is able to help the believers. So Allah is qadir, meaning nothing is difficult for him. Why? Because when everything belongs to him, then why would he not be able to carry out his will? When his ability is perfect, why would anything be difficult for him? So Allah is Qadir, meaning no one can resist, nothing can escape, and nothing can oppose him. When he decides that something should happen, when he wants to do something, it definitely occurs. We see that the name Qadir, it comes in the Quran with the name Ghafur Rahim, with the names Ghafur and Rahim. So in Surah Al-Mumtahina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عَسَى اللَّهُ أَن يَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ عَادَيْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَوَدَّةً Wallahu qadir, wallahu ghafur rahim. That it is possible that Allah will make between you and your enemies love. Any the people that you have hated all this time, people whom you have opposed and they have opposed you, it is quite possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create love between 
you all. So uh, you who were enemies before will become friends in the future. Wallahu qadir, and Allah is able to do that. And this ayah, the context of this is, you see, the Muslims who had migrated from Mecca to Medina, uh, the, you know, the, the Muslims were constantly at war with the Quraysh. So uh, here, uh, in, uh, hope is being given that it is quite possible that the people whom you, uh, you know, are fighting against, they are fighting against you. Tomorrow they'll be your friends. And this is what happened. Khalid ibn al-Walid, radiallahu anhu, he became radiallahu anhu, subhanallah. So many companions who previously uh, hated the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because uh, uh, when they were non-Muslim, and now what happened? Allah subhanahu wa taala changed their hearts, so they became companions to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then it is said, "Wallahu ghafurur rahim." Allah is forgiving and merciful. This is so beautiful. On the one hand, we see that the mention of this name here shows us that Allah is able to change hearts. So never, ever give, give up hope uh, of people. No matter how far people have gone, no matter how much they have hurt you, no matter how, uh, you know, what, what wrong things they have done, have hope. You know, Allah is able to change their heart. And then also remember, Wallahu ghafurur rahim, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Which means that no sin is too big for Allah to forgive. As long as a person repents within time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to forgive them. No sin is too big for Allah to forgive. So, Wallahu ghafurur rahim. And then we see that the name Qadir also occurs in the Quran with the name Alim. Alim meaning one who is knowledgeable. So we learn in Surah An-Nahl, Ayah 70, Inna Allah Alim Al-Qadir. Indeed, Allah is knowing and able. And we see that it is only with perfect, uh, it, it is only the one who, uh, whose uh, taqdeer, uh, meaning whose decree is perfect, uh, uh, you need, the, the one whose decree is perfect, by definition means that he is knowledgeable, that his knowledge is also perfect. Inna Allah Alim Al-Qadir. Then the name of Allah, Al-Muqtadir. Muqtadir, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, it has uh, even more emphasis. It is it is an even more emphatic form because remember a rule in Arabic language that more letters means more meaning, more emphasis. So Muqtadir is an even more emphatic form of Qadir. So it means the one who is perfectly able. The one, who, the one who is perfectly in control, the one whose power is total and comprehensive. And uh, look at the things, all the things that he has power over. And he not just you, but every single human being, billions of human beings, not just people, but also ants and also birds and also the weather and the earth and all the planets and all the stars and the angels also, this world and the hereafter. Hini, look at all the things that he has power over, all the things that he has decreed, that he has created, all the changes that he has caused to happen, all the things that he manages. Allahu Akbar. Allah is Al-Muqtadir. So uh, his qudra, his his ability is al-mutlaqa, meaning it is absolute, it is perfect. And we see that this name uh, occurs in Surah Al-Qamar, Ayah 41-42, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ جَاءَ آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ النُّذُرِ That uh, to the people of Fir'aun, warners did come, but كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كُلِّهَا But the people of Fir'aun denied all of our signs, فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ أَخْذَ عَزِيزٍ مُقْتَدِرٍ so we seized them, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seized them with punishment. And this was akhda aziz in muqtadir. This was the seizing of the one who is mighty, the one who is perfect in ability. So what do you think happened to the people of Fir'aun? When the one who is almighty and the one who is absolutely perfect in his ability, when he seized those people, what do you think became of those people? Could they survive? No. Could they escape? No. So this is a huge threat. And then in Surah Al-Qamar, Ayah 55, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَنَهَرٍ 
that indeed the righteous will be within gardens and rivers, meaning in the hereafter, fi maq'adi sidqin, in a seat of honor, in the malikim muqtadir, near the king, the sovereign, who is perfect in ability. So this is for the righteous, that how they will be in Jannah amongst uh, the, the rivers of paradise, near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a place of honor. So again, the name Muqtadir is mentioned. So we see that the name Muqtadir, you know, the, the perfect ability of Allah, on the one hand, it, uh, it instills fear in us, but it also gives us hope. It also gives us hope. So what is our share when it comes to these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It means that first of all, we should believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. What is difficult for us is not difficult for Allah. What seems impossible for us and what is impossible for us is not impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what does this mean? This means that we should rely upon him. We should have hope in him. We should expect the best from him. And of course, this also means that we should fear him because we should never forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over us. Yes, he has power over our fears and our enemies or or whatever it is that we are trying to run away from, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has perfect power over us. So let us not forget that. And and this is something that should cause us to fear him. We learn in Sahih Muslim that Abu Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he narrated that, uh, Abu Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said about himself that once I was uh, beating a slave of mine, perhaps his slave had you know, done something wrong, uh, whatever the reason was, he said that he was uh, beating a slave of his uh, with a whip. Okay, And he said that as I was beating him, I heard a voice from behind me. And what was that voice? It was, I'lam Aba Mas'ud. No meaning have knowledge of this, be aware, O oh, Abu Mas'ud. So Abu Mas'ud said that I uh, did not uh, recognize who it was or what was being said because I was so angry and I was so upset and I was so, uh, you know, I, I was just so busy beating my slave that I didn't care about who was calling me and what they were saying until that voice drew closer, meaning whoever that person was came even closer to me and I realized that it was actually the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, I'lam Aba Mas'ud, I'lam Aba Mas'ud, uh, no, O oh Abu Mas'ud, no, O oh Abu Mas'ud. And he said that I, I dropped the whip that was in my hand and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I'lam Aba Mas'ud, anna allaha aqdaru alayka minka ala hadha al-ghulam. That, no, O Abu Mas'ud, that Allah has more ability over you. Anna allaha aqdaru alayka. He is more qadir over you than you are over the slave of yours. Meaning, you think you have power over your slave, and because of that, you are beating him. Do you realize that Allah has even more has even more power over you? So Abu Mas'ud said that after that, I never beat any slave ever again. I, I, I could never hit any slave ever again. And uh, this is something that we need to remember, that truly, if we think we have power over someone, whether it is our children or our belongings or our spouse or the people that work under us, uh, then remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even more power over us. So let us not get deceived by our power, that we can uh, say whatever, we can treat people however, and we know that they, they have no one else to complain to. They are not able to defend themselves. They are not able to you know, speak up for themselves. They are not able to get any help. And we see that there are places in the world where 
you know, people who are victims of abuse, you know, they have the ability to reach out for help, but there are other places where people are not able to reach out for help. And sometimes they're so, uh, you know, uh, brainwashed that they don't even think that they should reach out for help or they're too afraid to reach out for help. So sometimes we see that people do uh, abuse others and they, uh, they they try to control them uh, in, 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 you know, in absolute terms. So no matter how much control you have over someone, no matter how powerful you feel against them, realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even more power over you. So fear him. Let us fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are beautiful. They inspire in us hope that whether it is you know a trial in life that we are going, we are experiencing with regards to our wealth, with regards to our relationships, with regards to our safety, with regards to our health, when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-qadir, al-qadir, al-muqtadir, then we're no longer afraid of our problems because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to change them, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to mend them. And on the other hand, these names also inspire fear in us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfect power over us. Now, when it comes to calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these names, we see that, first of all, uh, there's a beautiful dua which, uh, uh, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make. Uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make this dua. And what is this dua? It is, Allahumma ghfir li khati'ati wa jahli wa israfi fi amri wa ma anta a'lamu bihi minni. That, oh Allah, forgive me all of my sins my ignorance, my extravagance in my matters and whatever that you are more knowledgeable of than I am. Meaning my mistakes that, that I'm not even aware of, but you are better aware of them. Oh Allah, forgive me for all of that. Allahumma ghfir li jiddi wa hazli wa khata'i wa amdi wa kullu dhalika indi. Different, uh, different kinds of sins are mentioned. And then uh, there is an acknowledgement that all of these sins are in me. Allahumma ghfir li ma qaddamtu wa ma akhartu wa ma asrartu wa ma a'lantu wa ma anta a'lamu bihi minni. Again, O oh Allah, forgive me for what I have done before and what I did later, what I did uh, openly or secretly, and whatever it is that you are more knowledgeable of than me. Anta al-muqaddimu wa anta al-muakhiru wa anta ala kulli shay'in qadir. You are capable over all things. And this is, again, important for us to remember when we think about our sins, that yes, it is true, I have many sins, huge, uh, you know, uh, inexcusable. Uh, I could never justify them. And if I were to be honest, I deserve consequences for them. But Allah is able to do all things. He's able to forgive me. He's able to mend my state. Because he is ala kulli shayin qadir. Because you see, our own mistakes, sometimes we suffer because of them for years and years. Now, we're not able to go and fix our past. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to mend our situation so that we don't continue to suffer from the mistakes that we made in our past, in our ignorance, in our foolishness. And yes, indeed, we did make them. Yes, we are responsible. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to fix our condition. وَأَنْتَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah is fully able. And then we see another dua which we can make, of course, after salah and other and otherwise also, which is لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. He is alone. He has no partner. Uh, he owns everything. He deserves all praise. And he is able over everything. Now this is something, uh, this is a statement that we should say after salah. Also we learned that the Prophet wasallam said that whoever says subhanallah 33 times, alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times, and then says this, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer making it a hundred adhkar after every salah then the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says said all his sins will be forgiven even if they are like the foam on the sea 
meaning even if those sins are many, they will be forgiven. So let us make a habit of saying this dhikr regularly in the morning, in the evening, uh, uh, of course, after every salah. And also remember uh, that we mentioned this name, uh, you know, the meaning of this name in dua istikhara as well. Because in the dua of istikhara, we say that, فَإِنَّكَ تَقْدِرُ وَلَا أَقْدِرُ That, oh Allah, you decree, I don't decree. Meaning, the power to decree is with you. You decide what happens. I don't get to decide that. The final decision is in your hand, right? It's not in mine. So uh, we, we declare that in the dua of istikhara as well. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Qadir, al-Qadir, al-Muqtadir. And uh, alhamdulillah with that, uh, we will complete uh, our class for today. And inshallah, we will continue with some more names in our next class next Saturday, inshallah. Jazakumullah khayran, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.